this morning by, by the Fulani Janda Point Terrorist Army somewhere in Kimasa High School. Very, very sad. We will come upon them to have mercy upon the children. We are being persecuted. We are in prison for no reason. You are the Father, you are God, the Lord Almighty. Please, we are praying that you be very close to every single one of them, each and every one of them, who this very evening, morning, or night, depending on where their families are all over the world. Those who have loved ones inside the prison of the damnable Zoological Republic. For you to please have mercy upon us. Because we have been confined because of our people. We pour out all that we are on today and ask for your life saving grace into each and every one of them. Strengthen them and renew them. Give them determination, give them courage, and give them hope. Let them understand that freedom doesn't come very cheap. And out of their suffering and their pain, and those who have been martyred in this very cause shall fiasco be reborn. May your Holy Spirit permeate their daily routines that surpasses all understanding and may close to them warm our tormented hearts, knowing that we can only draw near to you and that you are with every each and every one of us, regardless of the terrible or terrible that we are going through at this moment. You choose in those who are in prison, those who are detained, including our mortals who are in detention, with a sense of your presence and your presence. And may your holy angels of heaven be ministering to their spirits. May you surround them with your everlasting care and love and support, that each moment of every blessed day that they may know that their pain and their suffering that they've been forced to endure in the British created hell called Nigeria is for your divine purpose to be fulfilled upon our lives. That this Biafra may come, that the world may rise up to say that indeed these are the children of God, these are the children of light, and unto them and through them shall blessing be upon Africa. Let your word be fulfilled. Let us adore and praise thy holy name in the land of the living. Now and forevermore we pray. He said, he said, he said, without further hesitation, we are going to move speedily ahead to what we have this evening. And I'm going to start, of course, predictably so with a ghost And what transpired. Somebody wrote to one of us this morning to say that the media is indeed very powerful because in Benin City right now, as, I, as we preach this very gospel of heaven, people are listening and I'm sure they are rejoicing. In that very land of Idu, that very land this very day lived up to its name, Igodobikori, the key that unlocks the key. In a those states this very day, something has happened which before now was deemed almost impossible because the politics of thuggery, of impunity, the politics of, uh, there are no words to describe, the politics of the damnable zoological republic. But this very day, that very key was inserted into the big key that unlocked the shackles of Godfatherism. And consign that little ugly bondsman, Shomole, to the scrap heap of history. I want to commend the people of Ikodobi Godo because today you have demonstrated bravery. And of course, aided by Governor Yosem Wike, who of course is the only governor in the East that understands the meaning of incumbency and the powers that a governor can bring. I do hope that Southeast Equilif governors may one day be able to let him He has led the fight from the front, but we must not forget that one thing that persuaded the mind, the very decayed, corrupt, insipid mind of Adam Chanjawi, is the threat by the U.S. government. In fact, the imposition of visa ban on most of them. That at least 
worked towards focusing their minds on having, uh, not reading the election too horribly. They tried to read. There were a lot of people, somebody, the Supreme Court governor sent somebody from Imo State to go and read the elections over there. They got the idiot and they gave him this sort of treatment and I believe that he deserved. All of them descended. All the corrupt APC criminals descended in those states, but the Edo people prevailed. He could only go to land as a matter of fact. They prevailed. And they banished Oshomole forever and ever from the front line of politics in the Dambek Sociological Republic. So whilst we are of course commending Edo people, or Igor the big the people as a matter of fact, we must also commend, because when they do the right thing, I will say it, we must commend the United States ambassador to this. The US ambassador to Nigeria, for once they did something right and they open. If they had been doing this all along, the level of criminality and, ban and what I call government banditry will not be this way. Can you see what they have done? For simply banning election riggers, they now concentrated the minds of Fulani INEC and Fulani election riggers, including the Ruplane Turner, to do the right thing in those states. That was why Edo prevailed. Edo State did not prevail, or Basiki did not prevail, because of all the should I say it's the um, very brave resistance that a lot of people put up? No, it wasn't that at all. What focused their mind? They thought to themselves, I'm not going to read this um, uh, uh, Pastor Malam or Pastor Al Haji into power and then risk my investments in the US. They all have houses in the USA. So this very evening, we must commend the United States Ambassador to Nigeria. She has done very well, she has done exceptionally well and we want them to continue along this line. That's what we want them to do. If they do the right thing, we will praise them to high heavens and back. But if they fail to do the right thing, of course, we will castigate them and rightfully so. So we must understand and recognize the genesis of this very heroic performance by economic of the people. The very basic foundation was laid by the U.S. ambassador to the Sioux. And from there, the people found the courage, someone the courage to do what is right. And it will go down in the history of the Zoological Republic that in a dust state, Godfatherism was consigned to the scrap heap of history. Again, I know some people said that the same thing could have happened in Lagos with Ambode and Tifunubu, um, the arch criminal himself with multiple names. His original mother died. He couldn't even attend the burial. Very sad. We will get to that later on. Um, people are saying that Ambode could have done the same thing to Tinubu, but without the support, without the the type of pronouncement, the fact that if you read election will be banned from or stopped from going to the USA, it wouldn't have worked. There had to be a carrot and a stick, and that stick was that visa ban. To the United States. So that was what focused the minds of all the fallen leaders and all the idiots, including the mass career in Asoro, that came out to congratulate Obaseki. And I'm also congratulating Obaseki, of course. Not that we're interested in the voice of the Sioux, but we hate injustice. So wherever justice prevails, we acknowledge it and we hate it. And this evening, the mass career, the presidency, because ever since we, we held them to account, they are now using uh, Buhari's name, the dead Buhari who is in the grave, in the shallow grave in Saudi Arabia, they are now using his name. And I also want to say, before I come into this, that this is also an example to those of you who think that you can go and they can govern you, they can type the sheet on your head. After typing the sheet on your head, they say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, you come back and you come govern. Like a uh, hope on him, he's not going to govern anymore. It's a very clear point. That means that any time that people in the zoo, that's entirely up to them, decide to go to the polls to vote, at least you now know that um, there is punishment for election rigors and those that promote election or political violence. They now understand that very clearly. And I'm very grateful for that. I cannot stop thanking the USA for that because they have now demonstrated once again that they, they are the conscience of the world. They, this is something we had expected the EU to do, to expect. Is, Belated you, Britain now tacked on, and they won't even enforce it. Forget what Britain said. Oh, we will uh, deny visa to 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 
those who perpetrate election fraud and violence. Britain will not enforce it. We know that U.S. will because their legal system in the USA is far more rigorous than you have in the UK. Forget about the UK world. The people that actually turned the tide in their door, the woman who did it is the US ambassador to the Soviet Republic. And we cannot have that. Uh, thank you very much. And on, on top of that, they, they said it, uh, it was Vanguard that publishes it. Vanguard, is, Vanguard said it's breaking. Uh, uh, congratulate or Vaseki commends election, electoral process. These are the same bunch of idiots who put the who puts on man in power? A criminal that came forth, they put him in power. Now he is commending the electoral process. I want people to understand that this is what they do. This is the way they operate. They fall on a janja wig. This is their mindset. They come to your house and they steal hundred naira from you. And when you complain too much, they give you ten kobo back in return. Some of you in the Indomie generation, you don't know what ten kobo looks like. Ten kobo is the is the single unit of the of the zoo um, 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 currency. Naira is the bigger one in hundreds, and then you have um, sorry in 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 tens, so to speak, because you have ten naira, twenty naira, but you have you also have one kobo, two kobo, three kobo, four kobo. I think you even have no, you have one kobo, you have five, you have ten, you have twenty-five. I don't know. Maybe it goes up to hundred kobo. I don't know if they have it. I don't think they do. What they have now is one liar, isn't it? These are the things I need you to understand. The Fulani will come to your house and steal your hundred naira in front of you. You'll be complaining and shouting. And then they will give you ten kobo back and return. And when you say, oh, we have address of money, your neighbor will now come up and say, no, 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 don't worry. Why are you complaining? After all, you have ten kobo. Why are you complaining? Me, I have nothing. That is exactly what I've done with the two states. They want to give the impression to the world that they can run a free and fair election and that is the narrative they will run with tomorrow and all through, throughout the, the coming days of this very week. So if you're foolish enough, if you're not schooled enough, if you're not intelligent enough, you will think that somehow INEC has changed. There is now a new era of transparent electioneering and, um, and uh, shall I say, um, 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 vote casting process. Of course it is not. You know it is not. They only, do, they only made it possible for Obaseki to win because USA said you read the elections, you're not going anywhere. Because the Kogi state governor, they've already banned him already. Kogi state governor, they've banned him. Now, what I'm saying is that if the US and to an extent the UK, if you know that these people got into power illegitimately by rigging elections, why are you according them recognition? Most of them were banned. As a result of the of the of the um, um, 2019 elections, that means that if you are banning somebody for electoral fraud, implicit in that ban is that that person is guilty of committing electoral fraud. And anybody emerging as a result of 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 of, of, a, uh, of an electoral system that is not transparent, that is not very clear, you cannot confer legitimacy on such a person or institution. If you have banned the Kogi state governor from traveling to the U.S. for committing electoral fraud, that means his office, the office he's holding is illegitimate. That's what it, by implication. Now, if that is the case, all of those that helped in the reading of, of um, a mask wearer, Jubril, then into power. And they have, they have now been banned from traveling to the U.S. That means that the government of all these Polani cabal in Asolov is illegitimate. And they said, Buhari said, but according to that very news, the president's spokesman, Garuba Sheku, in a tweet on Sunday said, Buhari also commended the people of the Indo State, the party's candidates and security agencies for conducting themselves responsibly. Can you believe that in the 21st century? 21st century. They are celebrating the Indo as if it was their own making, as if all of a sudden, Fulani Janja Wait have decided that there should be free and fair elections. Do you see how? That when I, I don't want to, I don't want to go to hard on black people today because somebody wrote to me and said that the children are listening, and sometimes they weep and they cry when I say things that I say about black people. And I'm saying it's not for those children because they are going to grow up very intelligent, very smart, and very discerning. They are not going to be as useless as this very generation that we have now. But heaven forbid, they won't be that way. 
What I'm trying to say is that some of you will not go about jubilating and you know, you know, toasting this very thing to your capacity to mean that you know somehow that democracy have now turned to gun and issue. Of course, it's a lie. As I said, remember, somebody came to your house and stole 100 naira from you. You shouted and you screamed and he gave you back 10 kobo, not one naira, 10 kobo in return. And you're saying he has done well. Nobody in their right things or in their right mind should visit that way. He said, the president added, I have consistently advocated for free and fair elections in the country because it is the bedrock of good democratic government. Of course, you saw people being disenfranchised. All of you were there when results were trickling in and IMF was changing it. They were announcing the results and the article was winning. And all of a sudden, there was a break, there was a pause. And once the pause, you're finished. I think they paused also in Edo. Until somebody reminded them that America will ban us. So if you don't consider Canada, America is the best a visa ban. I have a house in the US and I want to go there. I want to visit the United States of America. That was what happened. So before you begin to clap for yourselves, you've done nothing. The person that saved the those states is the American, the U.S. ambassador in Abuja. That woman made it possible. So you get your facts right. And of course, um, we are not going to downplay the tenacity of Obaseki himself and also what the role that we can play. And I think there was one other governor also, a Yoruba governor that was there also that did very, very well. That stood firm. firm. I said, no, this is not going to happen. And for those of you that managed, I don't know how they made it possible, somehow they managed to convince Sine that the results should be transmitted in real time and to a portal online so it won't be read. So from polling station, the, the portal online is making it very clear what the returns are on those polling units. So they couldn't read it. But uh, we are waiting for a replenton. <laughs> Maybe a replenton. If they go to Supreme Court, and those born to be idiots with their horse wig, talking, speaking, Latin jargon, will tell you that um, uh, 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 that INEC failed to collect results from Oba, from Ige Isamu stronghold. And as a result, the number of votes cast will now outnumber those registered on with INEC as eligible. Do you now understand it? Do you now understand it? These are the things that people don't know about, that it is our responsibility and our duty to bring it to the attention of the world. And this is what is happening in this zoo. So that some of you, you don't go jumping up and down and celebrating, because I don't celebrate. A zoo is always a zoo. A zoo will always remain a zoo, unless you rise up as we are doing to try to change it. Look at the people who are now telling you that somehow they now believe in free and fair elections, that uh, democracy is good for everybody, is the better of the Look at the government of Fulham. Now, let me give you an example. There is a controversy ongoing around the appointment of seven Northerners into management, I wouldn't say Northerners, I would say Fulham, into key management positions in customs that is in the South. Why I'm raising this is because if tomorrow now America says that there is no federal character in the federal appointments under this regime, they will change or maybe appoint one or two southerners into position. They'll tell you, oh, can't you see we have changed? Unless America rises up now to say that you must adhere to the federal character upon which all the constitutional statements regarding the filling of positions at these federal positions are equally rationed across the board. They will do nothing about it. I'm, not, I'm just trying to tell you, these are people that are telling you, oh, we, all of a sudden today, because they don't, they, they don't want their visa to America to be cancelled, all of a sudden they allow the door people to speak their mind. And if you allow free and fair elections, Nobody of a sound mind can ever vote for APC. Nobody with their correct senses in their skull can ever vote for APC. They know that very well. Maritime stakeholders, including a veteran journalist, Elva Asubex, have criticized Gavin's appointment of two acting deputy controllers, general and five acting assistant controller general of customs and transactions of the service by the controller general, Colonel Hamid Ali Fulani. 
um, who are the people he uh, appointed? Who are the people that he appointed into these positions? And from those he appointed into these positions, you will know what their plan is. Fulani has to be everywhere. That is the proper news you should be focusing on. Not allow them to use a dose state to deflect your mind or to divert your mind away from the very serious mess that the zoo is in. Now listen. Somebody called Saidu Galadina. Oba Mohammed, Hamza Gumi, Usman, Dan, Dakin Dari, all northerners, all Fulani, holding key positions in customs. Because they are importing weapons, they are bringing in weapons to be they are the ones to inspect it. It is them. They are the ones that build dry dock in Kaduna, whereas the Calabas seaport is not working. Whereas you watch a seaport is not working. Worry seaport is not working. But the ship I will keep referencing what happened in Edo for the sake of perspective so that you understand. When you start patting yourselves on the back, I want you to know that the only person who deserves an accolade is the U.S. ambassador to Nigeria and nobody else. For your information, nobody has ever stopped them from reading before. What is going to stop them? Before they go, they shoot, they do anything with that. If not for the visa ban, backed up by Britain. If not for the visa ban, believe you me, by now, they would have announced the Al-Haji as the owner. But maybe going forward, they now know that going and buying the ban on your head is not going to save you. But what Fulani is doing is still continuing. Their Fulanization agenda is still ongoing. The, the, the whole customs, from top, the top echelon of leadership is all Fulani. And nobody's complaining. This type of thing could have happened under Jonathan Hill. My good, they would tear down the walls of, of, of Asaru. But this is happening in broad daylight, and people are not complaining. And that is them for you until America speaks, until there are sanctions imposed, until somebody gets up, a white person, of course, it has to be that you know, EU or US, until they speak, they continue with their impunity. Because Britain is benefiting from it. That is why they must speak. And that is the truth. Something you must understand. They are because before these results were announced, there were deliberate election manipulation going on everywhere. In the stronghold of Obaseki, the capital is not working properly. People were getting shot all over the place. But eventually, the tenacity and determination of the people won the day. And Basaki, or should I say, the will of the economy for the people prevailed. I think it's Governor Shei Makinde also did very well. Governor Shei Makinde also did very well. These are the, because sometimes in life, if you're not vigilant, the same way with your body, because there are, I think somebody during the height of this uh, coronavirus um, 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 debate all over the world, I think some scientists came up and said that, that the human body harbors over 3 billion different viruses. 3 billion. And they're all working to kill you on a daily basis. Only one thing keeps you alive is the antibodies you have in your system. And so it is with life itself. 
there are now people who will always work for that place, for the destruction of anything that is good, including even an electoral process, including even a nation. There are people who would exist. Their sole aim for existing is to destroy something that is very good. It is left for the vigilance of the brave few to counter them. The same way that the antibodies you have in your body is on a daily basis fighting these billions, billions upon billions of viruses and bacteria trying to, get, to invade your body and kill you. That is how life is. And until we appreciate that very fact, we cannot begin to understand the presence of flavors, of flavors and saboteurs in our lives. As you are as a human being, there are even some bacteria and viruses that are silent. They only begin to work the day you stop breathing. The day they listen to you for your heartbeat and your heartbeat is no longer there, they say, oh, this man or woman is dead, oh, they go to work immediately. Their job is to dissolve your flesh. You can live to be 120 years. They are silent. The day you die, they begin to work. There are some that want to kill you on a daily basis. That is why your white blood cells are very active and working all the time. Those white blood cells are the volunteers we have in our land, very vigilant, making sure that the enemies can never overwhelm us. Why do you think when people contract HIV, they start panicking? HIV doesn't kill you. No, it doesn't. What HIV does is to attack your white blood cells, remove that immunity from you, so that when ordinary cold flu virus enters into your body, your white blood cells, if they say to your white blood cells, though there is an invader, they have come, go and attack them. You will say, I have no strength. I've been weakened. That is what HIV does to people. And that is how it is with life. When you allow saboteurs are like HIV, when you allow them to overwhelm your body's defense mechanism, that is why it's called acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. You acquire something that will defeat your immune system. Your immune system becomes deficient. That when a foreign an antibody comes in to attack the cells, it will, it is very, very important to have to an enemy. It is in life that they say where we come from, but also it doesn't matter to go to more. As it is, the thing within your body itself that you cannot see. So it is within life itself. Sabotua and the Dalai Head, they don't do anything. All their job is to come to weaken your resolve, to make you to begin to think that freedom is un unattainable. And you relax, and the fallen will come and invade your land, invade your body. That is their job. Same thing that HIV does to the human body. Tell the body's defense mechanism you cannot fight this enemy. They become very weak. And as the enemy comes in, it could be anything. It could be ordinary flu, ordinary flu, virus, and the person is dead. These are the things you must understand. And that is why we preach this gospel the way that we do it. Because if you're not vigilant, you're finished. If you're not vigilant, why do you think in America they have the CIA, they have the National Intelligence Agency, they have FBI, they have secret, they have the, what they call the Secret Service, they have... Um, just name it. They have the Drug Law Enforcement Agency, ATFA. They have, which other one is that again? They have the alcohol and tobacco, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. These are all secret services working to protect the way of life of the United States of America. But you don't see it. All you see are shiny buildings and things are happening that don't use pages, that are doing this and they're doing that. You are marrying them. You don't know the work. That CIA is doing it, that you can go to a shopping mall in America and buy something and not get blown up is because of all these agencies. They don't sleep at night. Do you think that without Mossad and Shepet that Israel will stand? That is Mossad and Shepet, they don't sleep, they don't go to sleep. Every blessed day, even in the UK, that is MI5, that is MI6, that is everybody, so they are very vigilant every blessed day to maintain their way of life. Who is vigilant or who is keeping watch on your behalf is you, nobody. 
It's only now that our volunteers are keeping watch over the afterland. If not, they will instead have been gone a long time ago. Janja would be dead. Janja would be dead. Fulani would have taken the police by now. The police would have been another event. They'll be discussing how to install a camera in the police. But we said no. That is not going to happen. And it will never happen. We have numbered them. It can never ever happen. Now, listen very carefully to this. The state, the Kogi state government on Friday petitioned the USA on its visa restrictions for individuals responsible for undermining Nigeria's democratic process and for organizing election related violence. The media of Kaduna is there. Tell the fact. I want people to understand the reason why the Kogi state governor is writing letters saying, please tell me why my name is there. I am surprised and I'm shocked. Because an election really, and America knows he did election to get into office. But he's a governor. So the work that we are supposed to be doing, we have abandoned it for white people to do it for us. Isn't it very ironic that it took the intervention of a white woman, an ambassador to Nigeria, for you people to conduct election and leave people alone? These are the things that I want people to understand. It took the, the, you know that we hate ourselves so much that what happened couldn't have come from a black country. Imagine a country like Kenya saying, um, no, uh, if you rig election uh, in Nigeria, you cannot come into Nairobi. Uh, imagine Ghana saying, if you rig election in Nigeria, you cannot come into Accra. Do you think anybody will listen to them? But it had to take the intervention of a white country for your corrupt politicians and the criminals in INEC to sit up and do the right thing. It's called perspective. So you understand where this country came from. The man is right. Through somebody called Ayo, they're saying, we received your letter from the embassy, made available to journalists saying that the letter was written. Sorry, the Kogi State Governor, Al Haji Yahaya Bello, wrote to the United States government because of the sanctions imposed upon him, which is, of course, visa. Now, they said, please note for note that for the purposes of this protest letter, we are not only interested in the sanctions to the extent that they are not preferable to the key state and the citizens. For the most part, we consider the elections in Nigeria are complex affairs, which will continue to require improvements. Whatever. They acknowledge that elections in Nigeria will continue. This is from the governor of Kogi State, that elections will continue to be rigged in Nigeria. They were saying this thing on Friday, until, until they, they, they become perfect. The 2019 Kogi State gubernatorial election was also not without its challenges. When black people tell you that in the election the, that they had challenges, it means that somebody somewhere was rigging the election. By citing the 2019 Kogi State governorship elections that saw the reemergence of Yaha Yabel, America now knows that he is an illegitimate governor occupying an illegitimate government house under APC. I don't know if people are following what I'm saying. By banning this man, America is saying that we have information at our disposal that leads us to believe that your election in 2019, or your re-election as the governor of Kogi State was uh, fraudulent. You rigged yourself into power using violence and manipulation of results. That is what the USA is saying. But the reason why I'm touching upon this is to let the world understand why America cannot come out and tell you that Aisha's boyfriend is wearing a Buhari lookalike mask. Because people always say that nonsense all the time. Why is that? If, if, if it is not Buhari, why is America not saying anything? But now America knows that somebody got into office is called a governor fraudulently. Even when the USA was writing to them, the United States Embassy said, addressed him as Your Excellency, the Executive Governor of Cookie State. Although they know, they know they're going to ban him from entering USA. They know that he shouldn't be quiet. They know that he rigged himself into power, or ABC rigged him into power. But America still called him Your Excellency, the Executive Governor of Cookie State. The same America is going to ban him from entering the United States of America because he rigged elections. I want, I don't know if people can understand what I'm saying. They know that he, he rigged elections. 
they still call him executive governor because all of you allowed him as an executive governor. So what do you want them to do? The same thing happens with coup d'etat. If any look at Mali, for instance, the military took over power. He says, call me the president. That's what you call him. He's the president of Mali. Are you going to stop him? You can't. Because Malians have accepted it. If you don't accept it, do something about it. I want to educate and enlighten those who keeps asking why is it that America won't do anything about uh, the mask we are Aisha's boyfriend with his hands looking like one of the 35 year old in Asorok. It is not their duty. They are banning Yahya Bello from entering the U.S. territory. They know that he stole the election in a Gogi state. They are still calling him your excellency, the executive governor. I hope that is not too complex for some people who don't understand or who are not or who are battling with their common sense as a result of existence in this world for the public. These are the things that you must understand. These are the things that you must know. Because America said something, and this is what we've been saying from day one, there is a lot of impunity going on in the zoo. USA, if you don't do anything, that impunity will continue. There are Christians dying every day, being slaughtered by Fulani Islamic extremists, terrorists and bandits. USA, if you do nothing, nothing will happen. If there are some people in, in USA, um, in the State Department in America, there's the foreign service, who believe that they cannot do anything. We have no powers. We can't do anything. We can't interfere. Ordinary visa ban, ordinary visa ban has delivered the right result in those states. Ordinary visa ban. And we want them to do the same thing regarding the daily slaughter of the innocent going on. As I'm speaking to you right now, that slaughter is happening in Okwa. It is happening in Owasa. That slaughter is happening in Obibo. It is happening all over the place. Christians are being killed every blessed day for no reason. Because America hasn't spoken. They have done nothing about it. It is not just about saying, oh, we are, we are engaging the government. Now, as Britain, we say we are engaging the government to see what they are going to do, to see we are taking them to task on the human rights and so on. Do something about it. Rather, all the years coming and writing and saying, oh, we sent observers to observe the election. There were a few um, uh, disturbances here and there in one or two polling stations, but that, that wasn't enough to affect the overall result. Rather than writing all that garbage every time as an EU observer or UK observer or US observer, all that garbage. Simple. If you read the election, you cannot, we, we can no longer give you visa. And you will see the results. You will see it with the American eyes. Don't talk to you stupid report. Uh, we, 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 uh, the EU was observing. And uh, there were a few violence, a few gunshots, a few people were disenfranchised. But all in all, it was a piece of rubbish. Now that America has come out to say, if you read, you cannot enter our country. Has things not changed? Has it not changed? These are the things that the world must understand and come to terms with. In Africa, you take action. These are white countries, powerful countries all over the world. These same white people colonized Africa for decades. So we respect them, we are afraid of them. That is the mentality of a black person. Once USA speaks, of course, the whole world will take it seriously. Now you have banned them from going to the United States of America. Has it not delivered a peaceful election in those states, relatively speaking, of course? These are the things that you ought to know. Yahya Bello said, my visa ban unacceptable. Yahya Bello tells US government, in a letter to the ambassador of the United States of America and the Secretary of State of Government, Fola Shode Adike Ayode said that the ban on Bello has emboldened opposition parties in the state who had earlier maintained that elections were rigged. Of course, it was rigged because USA, they have the, the raw data. You don't know they have satellite, they can see what is happening. You don't know that they have spy satellites, over, over 300 of them. Why, why do you think you go to Google Earth, you will see it? If ordinary Google can look into your, through your window to see your bedroom, how about USA government? They see all this violence, they see what you're doing when you're snatching ballot boxes, when you're killing people, and all your thuggery, they see all of that. And they have compiled it. But the funniest thing is, what this ban on Bedo means is that in the eyes of the USA, you are not a governor. But since your people are so stupid as to allow you to remain in government house as a governor, that is their business. 
if they call you, your, your excellency will call you. Also call you your excellency. I want people to understand this. Do you see how reasonable people reason? How sensible people reason? Not like animals. Yes, you. Now, Bello is I'm using Bello as an example. To me. I think Elufai also was banned from travel. I think Elufai also was banned in Tunisia. He will say he will call America an infidel country anyway. He prefers to go to Afghanistan and where there are terrorists because he himself is a terrorist as well. Now, this little boy, Bello, has been banned from the Tunisia, which means that he is not. Which means that he got into government house fraudulently and illegitimately. I, rather than writing a letter, go and present all the facts and figures before the world. Go somewhere and say, these are the results, this is how they were collected. Let the opposition party do the same thing and you see if you stay there for one more day. The same thing. After impeached him, you cannot do it because he is an executive governor. You have powers. Enugu State has the Enugu State governor has the powers to convene a panel of inquiry over the illegal shooting and killing of unarmed people in Yemen. But can they do it? If you ask them, they say, "If I do it now, they remove me. Who is going to remove you? Remove you from where? Why? Well, how come they are not removed from you?" And the funniest thing is that once you're bold and you're doing the right thing, they respect you eventually. Don't they respect her, Marido? Even we, they don't they respect him now. Sometimes being a coward doesn't mean. And at least, if there is one thing I like about those state elections is that the era of going and kneeling and as a pastor, they're shouting Allah Akbar on your head. So you can use this meaningless thing. If you're not popular with your people, Fulani can no longer put you in power. Because if they do, uh, they get visa ban. And what visa ban means is that you are a fraudulent politician. The office you occupy is illegitimate. Simple. And I hope that after tonight's program and our people will begin to appreciate the enormity of this very ban. Acts of violence, intimidation, or corruption that harmed Nigerians and undermined democratic process. That is what they do in APC, and they do it very, very well. And um, America should go further. They should go further than this. All they need to do is to say, if you are engaged in all these things, your assets will be frozen, will be banned from traveling abroad, and you see changes overnight because black people cannot do it. I want you to name me a black country that has ever successfully carried the revolution before. It's not in our DNA. Because even when you come, want to come out to carry out the revolution, because most countries you have in Africa are not homogeneous. There are different people grouped together by global masters. They can never, never agree. Once a head of state comes from your clan or your tribe, oh, that's the end of it. Nobody from that clan or tribe will be able to visit properly anymore. What is happening to Alamaji? The whole Fulani people, of course, they control the houses. They ganged up together and said that regardless of what happens, we must complete our eight years. Even if it's a cow in Asura, we don't care. He is our Mr. President. We will complete our eight years. A whole country is complicit in the subversion of their own, of their own constitution, which I will deal with later on, of course. Which I will deal with later on. And you must understand, the work we are doing, the tweet we are sending out every blessed day, some of you don't know it works because we are black people. We don't understand how information dissemination works. Why do you think Facebook is suppressing my post and the post of many other people? Why do you think so? Why do you think Facebook is busy suppressing people and promoting those they think will sustain the image of the zoo? Why? Because it travels very, very far. For well, those of you who think that what we are doing on Twitter sometimes, and that is why I have warned everybody must be on Twitter and you must follow one another. Twitter is very, very potent. Very, very potent. 
people understand that Facebook is compromised, they know that Facebook is corrupt, they know that Facebook will do anything corrupt in the world to make more money. That is how they operate. Nobody takes them seriously. If you want to take it seriously, you must go to Twitter. You must open a Twitter account. And if you don't have anything to tweet, simply retweet those that have written something that you agree with. And let me tell you why. As a headline by the Fulani Jang Jawi, the newspaper, called Premium Times, that, like daily trust that the mouthpiece of the law. Insecurity. Why Nigeria, Nigeria, that is, is not getting foreign support. Ex foreign minister. Nigeria is not getting support, which means they are not getting the arms they need to come and kill us in our villages. You opening a Twitter account is the difference between the army attacking your village and not attacking your village. You don't understand that? These people, they are well organized. They've been planning this for very many years. For nearly 150 years, they've been planning how to conquer everybody else. So they've used PPC, House of Service. All those times they are carrying their little radios in their their ears, you know, yeah, yeah, uh, I'm working with this radio. That was when the process of indoctrination was going on, preparing their mind for what is to come. When you see shoe shiners, as they cut them in Abba, doing training in Abba, I don't know if you know that. Those people, they, they, they in our villages, claiming they're sharpening our knives and cleaning our shoes and cutting our nails. They are all mercenaries. They are now in Abba, training. Somebody stumbled upon them, uh, that was yesterday, and was beaten mercilessly. Before he died, he, they asked him, why were you beaten? He said, I went and I saw them training. Those people shining your shoes. He saw all their boxes in Abba. You don't know what is happening. Some of you have no clue what is in store. What these people have in store for you? All the years they've been planning how to take you over. The only thing you can do right now is to go and open a Twitter account. Open Twitter and start following all of us. And you to follow people, follow them, and they tweet anything they tweet. That was how we made it impossible for any country that is sensible, apart from Czech Republic, China. Those are the two people now sending arms to the zoo. Czech Republic and China. Those two only. The rest have said no. Because they have seen reason in what we are saying that these arms are going to terrorists. Go to my Twitter. Um, um, uh, should I, uh, page or handle or whatever it's called and go to the messages you will see the consistency of our message consistency of our message don't give arms to Nigeria don't give arms to Nigeria it will end up in the hands of terrorists do you know today they have agreed with us because here is the headline why Nigeria is not getting foreign support ex-minister and I will read parts or snippets of what he said I will read Parts of it. Parts of it. For example, he said, what is the man's name again? His name is, let me see if I can get his name. The former minister said, his name is uh, Amin Wale. You know, it, for you to be a foreign minister, you know, Onyema, the one that is there now, Geoffrey Onyema is almost, he's almost fallen anyway. And if you call him an evil man, that means uh, your brain is not intact. He's a fallen name through and through. Now, this Amin uh, Wale, he's called. Is, was a former foreign minister. You know what he said in this publication by Premium Times, which is a foreign agent that we use for that. For example, we, which is this, remember when Jubril went to Trump and said, give us the company. Go and watch that interview. Trump, when they came out for the informal chat, Trump said, no, he likes helicopters. He likes helicopters. We'll try and give it to him. Well, he likes helicopters. Have you forgotten? Go and look at that interview of when um, Jubril, claiming his Buhari, went to White House to that city. To go and watch the entire press, um, 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 uh, the press briefing in the Rose Garden and then the informal chat that they had. He said, hey, he likes helicopters. You know when Tom was pointing at uh, that fool and said he wants, he likes helicopters. Now let me tell you what happened to those helicopters that Tom said he was going to give to Jubilee. That is why you must be on Twitter. Now listen to what this man said. He said, this ambassador said, for example, we wanted Cobra helicopters from the U.S. They refused to sell it to us during my time. We headed elsewhere to get those helicopters. I visited Turkey. 
Turkey said they are willing to sell it to us. But unfortunately, they cannot go ahead to sell it to us because the engines are from America. And therefore, they have, they have to have a license from USA. But USA was not prepared to help. Do you understand it? Will USA not wake up in the morning and say, we're not going to help you? No. USA knows that anything we give to Nigeria army will end up in the hands of terrorists because they are recruiting terrorists into the army. Where has that ever happened in the world before? Those of you talking about one Nigeria, and I think one day might get better, I want to ask you this question. Where else in the world have you seen people terrorizing and killing people and all of a sudden they are now part and parcel of the army fighting the same insurgents? Where have you seen such rubbish before? Only in Kisu and all of you are keeping quiet. Why are you quiet? Because you're docile, you're black, you're reasonable, you're fearful, you're cowardly. You cannot rise up to face your enemies and your enemies. America said no more helicopters to the zoo. And we are doing the same thing with Russia. We don't want Russia to say anything to them either. Because Russia also has conscience. They also have conscience. Sometimes they say, oh, no, that, that, that these arms dealers, they will sell to anybody. Once you get to you have your money, they will sell to you. If that is the case, why is it that America will not send American helicopters to the zoo? And we are also going to focus on Russia as well. It is the potency and the result of our non-stop tweeting of facts and figures to the rest of the world. And you must join us. Everybody must. It is a must. And I'm sure before the weekend, I will appoint somebody to oversee this. I will make somebody the social media coordinator of IPOB the whole world over because everybody has to be on Twitter. Everybody must be on Twitter. And if you doubt that the Twitter is working, and those that will tweet, Ambassador Capo, a very highly respected, of course, former US Ambassador, who is um, one of the people that the world listens to when it comes to issues to do with Nigeria, the area, of course. He tweeted, Ham's export policies need to be reassessed given how much material is being lost to unintended recipients, including Boko Haram. Are you understanding it? The entire arms policy of the USA, commentators in America, policymakers are now asking the government of the USA, you need to fill your entire arms sales to places like Nigeria because anything you sell to them ends up in the hands of terrorists. It is here, tweeted by Ambassador Campbell, the same thing we have been saying for months. That is true that the whole world listens to us. Everybody listens to us. It is here, in black and white. And if you are not vigilant, if you are not vigilant, this draconian dictatorship, according to somebody, somebody wrote this, that APC, what you have in us of this economy cabal is a draconian dictatorship disguised as a democracy through rigged elections and a hijacked Supreme Court supported by a rubber stamp legislature. What they have done in front of your eyes without you knowing is the formalization of the entire structure of governance. But you won't know. America have said there will be visa ban. And all of a sudden, uh, uh, they have allowed you to have free and fair elections in Europe. And the opacity is the one that some of you, being black people from Africa, you have forgotten everything that they have done to you. You now focus on Edo. That Edo will give you a false sense of hope that in the future things will be better. That is what they have done. Now listen to this. This government is draconian. Draconian to the core. It is an evil regime. They have hijacked the Supreme Court. Do you know that should Isai Yebu go to the Supreme Court and the aeroplane turn up? Well, in fact, I'm going to write to the U.S. ambassador to add every Supreme Court judge that sat on the Ehedior and those of the Marques to this list of those who are going to be banned because they tampered with the will of the people. If you doubt me, tell me why they should have more people who uh, they claim went to the police, more than I make itself, that is the body set up by law to conduct elections. I am going tomorrow morning, I'm going to write, I will instruct my lawyers who will write to the U.S. ambassador, and I will
would list the names of, in fact, from tonight, people should start telling me from tonight, I want the names of all the judges that installed Hobos of Emma as governor of Imo State. I am going to ask the U.S. ambassador based on available facts and evidence to also ban them from visiting the USA. Very simple, isn't it? I can even make the letter public. I'm going to write it to the U.S. ambassador. You are uh, you 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 claim you want to to penalize those who are into electoral malpractice and fraud and all the rest of it. Here, the Nigeria Supreme Court is part of the electoral fraud. The Supreme Court is part of the electoral fraud. If you ask people who kill themselves over the, the, the nuances of law, I am not interested in that. I will only say to America. 853,000 people voted in the United States, according to INEC, the body set up by law to conduct elections. Supreme Court went and brought votes and said 900 and something thousand people voted. America, do you believe INEC or do you believe the Supreme Court? Who was set up to run elections? Is INEC? INEC, bring your register. How many people went to the polls? 800 and something thousand people, less than a million people. Um, Supreme Court, where did they get the other number from? They said, oh, we cannot review because we are, we are the apex court. We cannot review what we have done. We are the apex court. Oh, you lied and you cannot review it. You lied. Now, all those uh, judges that are going to be banned from going to the USA because they're election leaders. Imagine a country where the Supreme Court is part of the legal process. You wake up in the morning and you say you believe in that country. You believe in such a place. A place where Supreme Court, Supreme Court is part of the legal process of the ruling party. That was why this very clever writer here, it's not me that wrote it, this very clever writer here said, and I will read it for the world to hear. That APC is running a draconian dictatorship disguised as a democracy through rigged elections vis a vis uh, COVID state, for instance, the idiot is crying now, and they hijacked Supreme Court, supported by a rubber stamp legislature. He went on to say the worst, however, is the open faced display of tribalism by the foreign religious bigot, nepotism, and the blatant exclusion. The customs I read to you earlier being a prime example. The rule of law does not exist in Nigeria anymore. And I'm going to use Hopus or the Supreme Court governor as an example. Rule of law does no, no longer exist in Nisu because if you go to Opa right now, army are killing and shooting at people as I speak to you right now. In Iwacha, the same thing. In Enuku, the same thing. An army that was set up to fight external enemies are busy Inside exterminating people, they feel uh, opposition to the government. Nigeria, according to this writer, is now a full blown Islamic fascist state holding millions of citizens hostage. And if you don't rise up to do anything or convince the likes of the uh, US ambassador to do something, you are finished. You are finished. Now, they said, expect more intrusion from international strategy because the situation is now so critical and could have dangerous consequences for the sub-region of Africa if the people choose to go the way of violent resistance. Even people who are moderate, even people who are pacifists, all of a sudden, they are saying this can no longer continue. There must be resistance. And I'm asking everybody who is listening, every day the army comes to your village to raid, kill people, uh, arrest them. Those who are working in the courts, especially in Abia State, are making money. Those in the courts in Iwacha are making money. Because they, one of the deputies, that was somebody, I think he's dead now. He wanted to take money from IPOB and we said, we're not going to pay any money. People that went out to celebrate Donald Trump in 2016 were held in detention for three years. For three solid years. The outgoing U.S. ambassador... We wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote. I went to America. I complained to every legislature I met. There are people, people came out to celebrate Trump. And they were locked up for three years. For three years. If those people become violent, you 
to pick up arms, are you going to blame them? Because resistance is a duty. You must resist. You must resist this Islamic Janjabudism. Forget about the those things. The reason to you to to to, to uh, somehow make you feel good for a few days. Their plan is there. Their plan is to spread Islam by force, to polarize you. Their plan is to turn you into how they are. Can we imagine if they have succeeded? They succeeded with two on the platform. They put your higher bell there. Imagine if they have succeeded in putting the, the, the Zamu. That means there is no need for elections anymore. Anytime there is election, you just travel to the north, they tie the shit on your head and say, Allah, Akbar, Allah, Akbar, convert you to Islam, you come back to the winner. Imagine such a, such a society. Can you imagine leaving such a society to your children to inherit? That's what we are saying. That is why we are on the path of self determination. That we don't want to be part of the Supreme Republic because nothing good comes out of it. Resistance must be done. We must resist. If we don't resist, we are gone. The houses refuse to resist. Today, they don't exist. Only their language does. Everybody in the Bible Belt, they refuse to resist. When Ujuku resisted, they did not see what Ujuku saw. Now, everybody is seeing that thing that Ujuku saw. Do you doubt me? The Central Bank of Nigeria, for those who don't know about this Islamization agenda, what they are doing in the Bonny State, they have gone to their Bomani and will make you the president. Yeah, because of that, allow us into a Bonny. Let us do And we are saying no to that. And do you know they have bought over some village heads in the Bonny? Some so called traditional rulers in the Bonny State. Do you know that? And of course, when we are studying the mindset of an evil man before we started IPA, I studied them for very many years. We know a time like this will come. We know the flavors will come. Even from the quarters we least expect, they will come to them. But we are all going to prevail. And I will tell you why. Let me tell you what is going on in the zoo that some of you do not know. Some of you don't know what is happening, but I will tell you. There is a bank called Jai's Bank. J-A-I-Z. J-A-I-Z. Bank. They have been given a license to operate an Islamic interest-free banking. And now another bank has emerged, Taj Bank, T-A-J, Taj Bank, in all the 36 states of the zoo. The Sultan of Sokoto, who is the head of all Muslims in the zoo, has warned that this Taj, being an Islamic bank with Jays, that whatever they do must conform with the rules and regulations of Islam. Are you listening? Is there any Christian bank? Has anyone gone to them and asked for Christian bank and get your license? Two Islamic banks. Now listen very carefully, please. This Jai's bank has also set up what is called Takaful Islamic Insurance. What they want to do is that Islamic religion wants to control the economy. But they want to do it in a very subtle legal way. Very soon, only now, Dangote only has the sole right to cement, sugar, salt, pasta, which is a spaghetti. Very soon, the only him will control the supply of petrol for your vehicles. Should he finish his refinery near Lagos? They want to, what they, they have gotten political power. Now, what they want to do is to Islamize the economic process. And this is how they're going to do it. Listen very carefully, please. They want to control the economy as well, as well as politics, which they have in their firm control with the help of the British. I don't know if Britain will also help them to control the economy. That remains to be seen. You must remember, the richest man in the whole of Africa is Adiko Dangote. He controls 54% of every industry in the zoo. If you come to the zoo, Nigeria, 54% of the manufacturing base of the zoo belongs to the Fulan, through Dangote, who is Islam, of course. Now, listen. Very soon, your sisters and your, and your nieces will look for work and your wives will look for work in Jay's bank or Jay's insurance or Jay's insurance. 
And do you know, because he's an Islamic bank, listen carefully, please, because Jace Bank and Jace Insurance are Islamic financial institutions, even if your wife is, the, sorry, even if you're a pastor and your wife is looking for work in one of these institutions, she has to wear hijab. Uh, after it's an Islamic bank. Is that very clear? Is that very clear to all of you? How they are emasculating you. They are strangulating you. You don't know. They are strangling you. They are finishing. You, you people, you are. I wish these people can see. As part of the conditions of service in Jays Bank and Jays Insurance, you must wear hijab to work. And then very soon, as this writer quite rightly pointed out, you will be forced to pray five times in a day. And you may have to work on Sundays because they don't recognize Sundays as being a holy day. And they will pay you very well until they buy over your soul and then you come back to the village and start preaching Islam. And if you're married, they will force your kids to attend their Islamic schools as part of the job incentive, isn't it? This person said that um, people should mourn like Mordecai did, Esther and the Jews when they were suffering in Babylon. That the end is near. If the horror does not fully happen in your days, it will happen in the days of your children. So this is why we want to be afraid. People don't understand. We want to save you from what is to come. We want to save your children from the worst fate that you have had to endure. Are you following what we're saying? That was why somebody wrote or somebody spoke or said something which was captured by one of the Zoo newspapers. That the Zoo will break up before 2023. And some people have see, heard some comments and uh, people are writing, uh, you know, and this is a, um, this is a um, Cardinal uh, Onaika, the Archbishop Emeritus the former Catholic Archbishop of Abuja Justice, well-spoken, a man that I respect so much, Onaika, a man that I respect very, very much, because he's outspoken and he's an honest man. He has spoken, what did he say? Nigeria can break up before 2023 if we remain irresponsible. People can now say it, that resistance is now. Resistance is not tomorrow. People must build resistance. Middle belt must resist. Since the middle belt, the, the heavy hitters of the middle belt have carved themselves out of Arewa, has heaven gone off? Has heaven fallen? The only way to approach Fulham is to stand on your two feet and say to them to end with you. They don't mean well for you. This very archbishop, is an emeritus archbishop, have spoken. He said that the zoo may not last up to 2023. And so I have seen people speculating and talking and said, I, we are in, um, in September. He said that Biafra is going to come this year. I said it, yes. Because I love to give myself very challenging deadlines. Very, very challenging. And I said it, and the reason why I said it is to tease out the saboteur as we need. They will abandon the struggle. They will start tell, talking about the timetable. That is how you know people of feeble mind, people who are weak, people who cannot sustain the battle. And once I said it, there was a group that I used to have respect for. That was the only thing they picked up about. And since that day, I banished them. I know how to do that. You see, Sago, you know when you want to catch a lizard in the village, because I grew up in the village. I don't know, some of you grew up in the township. So you may not appreciate what I'm saying. But I grew up in the, in the village. That's the way we catch a lizard. That is this very grass. You know, we, 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 we twist it. We pluck it and we twist it. And uh, to mimic a, a, a grasshopper in distress. And then when the lizard comes, we'll grab it by the neck. As a pet. Because in those days, immediately after the war, your parents only had about 20 pounds in the house unless you are from one of the several families uh, where you got all your money back intact. Uh, no, we had to make our own toys. Ask anybody of our generation. We didn't used to go to buy toys in the shop. We made our own toys. Every toy, every season had its own game. 
During ready season, we throw open rubber, rubber, the, the, the seed. We sit down on the ground to throw it. When the, um, summer begins to come, we mm -hmm. go and uh, we, uh, our uncles and our friends will give us money. We go and buy chewing gum and we take the pictures from the gum and we start throwing it cowboys from America and uh, flags and animals. When that season is over, we look for another thing to, to play with. We, 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 there's something called the Airway but we go and we make our own toy gun. We made it ourselves. After that, we go and do, we build bodies. I don't know which is the, the, which is the, the wheel bearing. We go to mechanics and we take out the wheel, the bearing, in a wheel. You know the bearing? We use it to build our own cars. As little kids, we we'll go down the, the uh, uh, a steep slope. We can get injured, we get up, and we, once you get back home, uh, all your mother owes is iodine and hydrogen peroxide. When that season is off, we go and use ordinary car, car tire, car tire. We put, oh my goodness, it's guitar, we used to make guitar ourselves with, with, with empty cans of um, pig milk. That is maybe that is why that generation is so innovative. Do you understand that? We made all those things. So we know how to reason. If you want to catch a sabot and pretending, 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 you set that time for the sabo and the sabo will jump. That's how you know them. They will just hold this and say, Oh, Biafra, we want emancipation, we want self determination. Once I said Biafra will come this year, this year hasn't ended. They have certain memory. That's how you know them. Sabotua is inside them, but they don't know how to bring it out. So I help you to bring it out. You don't know. We have them. But we are still working on it this year. This very year. You will see what will happen this year. Has it ended? It has never ended. And you will see, all of you will see what is going to happen this very year. I am very grateful to the very eminent Archbishop, who is emerging, of course. The zoo will break up. People can see it. Nobody, and you know one thing about Fulani. Fulani knows that if the liquid power is over for them, they know that. They know that because if you relinquish power to anybody, Fulani has made it possible. If it is an, uh, a, a Jukun presidency, or Igbo presidency, or Yoruba presidency, that person will line every office with Yoruba people. He can't do nothing. How can he complain? So Fulani knows the game is over. After Fulani administration, anybody coming in can decide to appoint the brother as the, as the chief of staff. The, the wife as the as the secretary to the government, you cannot speak. Fulani has done it. Anybody else can do it. And there is no they have killed the federal government. And anybody coming in will reject the entire system that the Fulani will suffer. The only thing they have in life is politics and governance. They have nothing else. They have nothing else. If anybody comes in to create a level playing field in terms of entrepreneurship, Dan Gode will be overtaken in a matter of six years more. You have more genuine multi billionaires that will manufacture things on the ground that people will want to buy and sell. Anybody going in there, not Poland, they, you see all these things that Poland think they have gained, it will be reversed. They cannot do crew anymore. Crew is no longer fashionable. And who is in the army to do crew for them? Is it middle girls? Middle girls can never join them anymore. These are the things that you ought to know. These are the things that you need to know. And we are bringing it to your attention. We want you to understand that we have every angle covered. People should not panic, not needlessly, not foolishly. Every angle is covered. And we are marching on relentlessly to listen. When we are having meetings, they invade, they arrest, they shoot. It's full and a way of saying they are going to intimidate you into submission. Because it worked with Ohaneze, it worked with the so called uh, uh, political class. They think it's going to work with IPA, and that's what they think. I want to remind them you've been killing us from day one. It's not stopped us. Instead, we go from strength to strength. Go and say, full and are very foolish. Go and study the history of resistance. Fulani, are you more clever than Britain? Are you more, more uh, um, grounded? Are you more, do you have more military might than the British after the Second World War? But they had to give up on all their colonial territories. 
because of the persistence of the indigenous populations. People persisted. You see this IPOB, the more, the more you kill, the more you arrest as your baby will be, as your baby now was, the more stronger we become. Ask the British when they came to our land the first time. Douglas of you, hopeless, dirty, stinking, filthy cattle You think by doing all these things you can get us into submission? You're wasting your time because you will die in our land. You will die there. You will see. You will, you will die there. You will see. Because the, just like your helicopters, you didn't get it. All we are doing is to build up evidence. Evidence. Even with the electoral reading business, is to build up evidence until one day a white man will say, Enough is enough. Because blacks know we cannot reason very well. A white man will say, Enough is enough. You keep killing Christians and you think they're not taking it. You think they're, they're foolish. They're not reacting. One day they will do. America will do to you what they did to Europe after the Second World War. Go and get out of Africa. All those colonies get out of there immediately. And you've got your flag independence. That is why I am saying Edo, don't over celebrate about Edo. Because what happened in Edo is exactly what happened with the end of colonialism. They say, Oh now you have free and fair elections. You you are you, you drop your guard. America said to Europe, France and the UK, get out of Africa. And they did. They said, okay, we are going to go. But in place, we are going to give you flag independence, which is what you have today. You don't have your own sovereignty. You are not in full control of your sovereignty. That is why you give people crude oil and you take it petrol, because your brains are not correct. Now, listen. The consequences of what this very brilliant writer wrote earlier that I read to you, the consequences of APC running a draconian dictatorship disguised as a democracy, I want to give you the example of it. And I want to ask you this. Had Hobo Zorema been elected or voted for people, do you think that he would enact the laws that he did through the state? Do you know Hobo Zorema enacted a law or got some idiots in the state of assembly to pass a law? giving himself the same status as the president of India. I will repeat. Do you know that the Supreme Court governor of Imo State, a man that nobody voted for, that the fallen need to post? I don't know why it is after Imo State now that America is bringing in this visa ban. America, why didn't you bring in this visa ban in Imo State? Because Hobo Zarema cannot travel abroad. He cannot go to the U.S. Of course, he cannot go as an election leader. I want to ask America, why didn't you do it then? Anyway, they say, well, whenever you wake up in the morning, it's your morning, isn't it? We need to go to as they say, where we come. Somebody should please help me and translate that to English. Uh, the way it will make sense. But um, literal and in a metaphorical way, please, somebody should translate that to I want to ask, if the people voted for who was on them, and the greatest governor we've ever had in our land, I mean, across the entire Piafra land, the entire East, the Samba, greatest of them. Now, I want to ask you, did Samba ever wake up one day, despite all the miracles that he wrote, to try to assume the powers of Queen Elizabeth? What I'm saying to the world this evening is that hope goes to them is now on the same level as Queen Elizabeth of India. And funny enough, Nobody voted for the queen. The same way that nobody voted for Hope Zarema. Now listen to what he has done. Hmm. Hope Zarema has signed into law in Imo State. It is called Imo State Administration of Criminal Justice Law Number no. Two of 2020, ISACJL 2020, which empowers him. This idiot that nobody voted for, which empowers him to arrest and detain any IPOB member in the state for as long as he wishes because this law was made for IPOB, not for anyone else. The reason why he made this law is he just so that he can keep arresting people without taking them to court and detain them at his own pleasure to allow the full army to build their mosques, to build their settlements, to do to take over your state. That's what he wants to do. And how he can do it is 
to bypass the law court because they arrest us and once we get to the court they call to you see their frivolous charges and they'll, be, they'll dismiss the case they will grant bail because we've done nothing wrong we've not harmed anyone in the state government for those of them has signed into law in the state a law enabling him empowering him to arrest and detain everybody at his pleasure the only person that has that right in the world is Queen Elizabeth of England. You can detect in a democracy, you can, even, even so, they, they don't even make use of it. Propose of a man wants to be queen, queen the king of, uh, of uh, the, no, the, the, the Sally King of Imo State. Not him. He's not even up to an MA. He wants to be the Sally King. Sally King leader of Imo State. I can, he can go to a Haji and point at anybody and say, arrest him. Put him there anytime I feel like. And the reason why I'm saying this is because I want to, to I want the world to understand the type of videos that emerge as politicians in this so-called new media, especially in Biafra. With every apology to you, to to those who are doing right, to those who are doing what is right by the name of heaven. With full apologies to you. Such cadre of people. This idiot has given himself powers. According to this law, any person detained on the orders of Rosa Lemba can only be released when he grants a license to the state of the day. Rosa Lemba will now say there are rights and license. You can now release him under the count of probation. He has a procedure that I am now happy. <laughs> and you know the funniest thing? The idiots that pass this law in Imo State claim the intellectuals. They are in the house, Pastor. See, these are, these are the morons that claim or that have, they know something when they know nothing. Why do I say what I say? <laughs> Let me tell you what the, the law says. Section 484 of the law provides where any person is ordered to be detained during the governor's pleasure, he shall, notwithstanding anything in the law or in any other written law contained, be liable to be detained in such place and under, under such conditions as the governor may direct. Those of can say, take him to a Kibbe prison, take him to to, to prison in a, in a, you know what, take him to a new prison as he likes. <laughs> uh, in a democracy. <laughs> Somebody who was voted for and can be voted out, so they claim, although he did himself in because nobody voted for him. Can you see? The reason why he's enacting this law is because he was not democratically elected into office. He wants to try what his masters have done, the gentlemen. <laughs> the law also abolished all forms of preliminary inquiry or preliminary investigation into a criminal charge by a magistrate or any other court. This baboon, this monkey, went and took away all the powers of the magistrate to investigate so he can actually pick up somebody who's innocent and lock him up because he doesn't like the person. And no court, no magistrate, no high court can review it. Look at the Imo state of Mbappé. Look at the, look, the, look at the idiocy, the stupidity going on in Imo state. They have intellectuals that went to school. Most of them are graduates. Do you see why I need university education in this school? Nigeria should not have investors. They are foolish. They are foolish and foolish and foolish. How can people that went through the four walls of a high institution allow this to stand? And do you know the funniest thing? Do you know the funniest thing? When they were being sworn in, including Hope Rose and Emma, uh, as the Supreme Court people, they, he was sworn in with a document called the Constitution of the Zoo, written by Abdul Salami Abaga, the full and the Constitution of Nigeria. And in that Constitution, they swore to uphold the Constitution. And my submission, not even a supposition, what I'm saying this evening is by by the mere passing of this nonsense, this feudal garbage into law. Who and every House of Assembly member that voted for this very stupid law in the state is in direct contravention of their oath of office. Because it is goes contrary to the, the same documents that they swore to uphold the right to fair trial, 
the right to be heard by a judge. The when the idiot was holding the constitution, they never they, they, they amaze me. They never even they have not even studied the constitution. They don't even know what it is. That constitution is what her code says in layman's terms. You cannot put anybody in jail without a court of law saying so. That constitution you are holding up and swearing to uphold, and that you have now made this very stupid change of it law, says that nobody can throw anybody in jail without a court of law saying so. And that nobody can hold anybody in license or whatever it is because that person is not your slave. So, who goes on them as foolish? You know, that is why when you bring people who go into 419, people doing Yahoo, Yahoo, and you put them in, polit in a political office, you, um, I'm telling you, you are creating havoc for yourself. When people say, don't vote for such idiots, you don't understand. Look at what this, because he was in Lagos doing 419, doing Yahoo, Yahoo. He thinks that he can, you know, you need to chance, so you go, you need to... If you want to have treasure, you give them treasure. You convince them to write email. He thinks that this is writing email to a potential book somewhere to drop cash. That's what Hobo Zarema thinks he's doing. You're formulating and passing a law that goes contrary to your oath of office. Are you not an idiot? <laughs> you see how foolish they are. They claim they are intelligent and they are knowledgeable. Any person detained uh, is at the governor's pleasure. You will not be released unless the governor says so. But at least one of them, one right honorable okay, okay Kanuma has written a report to say his hand is not in it. So apart from right honorable okay, okay Kanuma in Ugo State, the rest of you that voted for these things, you should all be impeached and turned away from your office. Do you know why? And I expect William to take this up. This is a law, an anti IPOB law that goes on the market party. What we are saying to them is that if you are one of those that voted for it, you should be thrown out of the House of Assembly because you have contravened the oath that you took. You swore to serve under the constitution of the Zoo, 1999 Apples around the constitution. That was your oath of office. You took an oath to defend that constitution. That constitution says that this law that you passed, you shouldn't pass it. Anybody who passes this law should be in prison. Hopefully, of them should be in prison for passing this law. Not only has he gone contrary to the oath of office that he took, he has taken active steps to subvert the 1999 constitution of the Zoo. And you see how, why a 419 should not be in political office? Do you see why a Supreme Court, in fact, I blame the Supreme Court judges. Do you see why you shouldn't be appointing governors for people? All the tangle, a Do you see why you shouldn't dabble into politics? Your job is to interpret the law. Look at the idiot you put in Igbo State. You see what he's doing? You can see what he's doing. The man is rather than saying, I want to use, use this opportunity to inform the people of whom we told this state constituency, and by extension, all the people that I'm not privy to the clandestine insertion of some atrocious, vexatious, and anti democratic clauses to the Igbo State Administration of Criminal Justice and Criminal Appeal 2020, and we want this to be thrown out. This is according to, according to Right Honorable O.K. Olekam writing a rebuttal on this very issue. You know that Nigerians, uh, the zoo animals, when I say it, they say I'm insulting them. Graduates in Nigeria are a joke. That is why some of them disguise and, and say they do not like them the kind of IPO. Because they have to be, they are pained that I said that the education is wasted. I'm going to prove it to you today. I'm having a sip of water. I want us to look in greater detail at what the fall of the Supreme Court governor of Imo State, who puts on the matter, went to the election in Edo. He took some people to go and falsify results in Edo. People, people with conscience, people with conscience, people that claim they have conscience, refer to him as a governor. How sad. Now listen to this. I want to tutor who puts on their mind every baboon in the State House of Assembly that didn't go to school. Some of you with your forged certificates, some of you with your uh, 
intended post to a farm in the name of universities. That even your lecturers, some of them, their brains are empty. Some of you do cultism, you bribe your way out. Some of you go and do whatever that you have to do to survive. And you sleep your way to a degree. I want to educate some of you who may have made it to in the state house or something. I want to enlighten you this very evening. Now, there are what is called constitutional limits on detention. Constitutional limits on detention. I want Hobo Zodiman to understand that that constitution you are holding and you are being sworn into office with, and every idiotic in the House of Assembly member that passed this anti IPOB bill, the name of State House of Assembly, that section of the constitution that you're holding reaffirms the supremacy of the constitution. And, I'm, and I quote Section 9. Somebody should please Google the Zoo Constitution, please, again, and put it on my page. Section 9 of the Constitution of the Zoo makes it very, very clear, makes it very, very clear that every treaty entered into by the zoo is part of the laws of Nigeria, like the African Treaty on Human and People's Rights. It is a Nigerian law. It was domesticated in 1983. It was called the Enforcement Act of 1983, Chapter A9 of the Laws of the Federation of Nigeria of 2004, because all laws in the Nigeria was codified in 2004, before that it was British. Section 36 of the Constitution of the Zoo, that constitution you are sworn in with, makes it very clear that you cannot detain anybody for more than 24 hours. If a competent court is within the jurisdiction of that, uh, if if the police is with the police station where the person is being held, is within the jurisdiction of a competent court of law, or where the crime was committed, are you listening? So I'm telling the army and the police, all of you holding IPOB family members in your cells and in your card rooms or whatever you call it, you call them, you are actually breaking the law. The constitution says you cannot hold anybody for more than 24 hours without charging them to court. That is very clear, is there? But because the zoo is a zoo full of black people who cannot reason very well, they don't even know the law they are supposed to be holding. Now, I want to remind who of them again of a very critical part of the constitution. He says that the constitution of the zoo is supreme, and it's with this section one. Subsection of the Constitution provides that this Constitution, the war written by Abu Salami Abubakar, is supreme, and its provisions shall have binding force on authorities and persons throughout the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Section 1, subsection 3 of the same Constitution says that if any other law, are you listening in both states as of assembly, if any other law is inconsistent with the provisions of the Constitution, this constitution shall prevail, and that other law shall, to the extent of its inconsistency, be void. So, all of you in Imo State that have spent time enacting this or passing this useless bill, by virtue of the fact that you have granted purpose of them the powers to detain at will, that law you have made is null and void according to the constitution you were sworn into office with. Is that very clear? Because nobody, according to Abu Salami's constitution, has the right to detain any other person. Only a court can do that. So you are in direct contravention of the constitution of the zoo, which is what to uphold. Now, section 35, subsection 4 of that same constitution says that any person who is arrested or detained shall be brought before a court, not before Governor of Imo State. Any person who is arrested or detained shall be brought before a court of law within a reasonable time. And if he is not tried within a period of two months, anybody who is in detention in the zoo for two months without trial is liable to be freed on bail. That is the law according to your constitution. That is the law. Go opposed on it, but it's not very clear. So, because um, you are dealing with IPOB and we are learning. Some of you didn't go to school. Some of you obtained a degree. 
of, of course, question it. From Zoo University, where you don't go to school, you are on strike for four years. You go for a final year and you find lecturers and they graduate you. They give you a worthless piece of paper as a certificate. And you start talking about the short certificate. Have you seen it? Not even their lawyers know this. Anytime somebody is in detention for up to two months, they are entitled, without conviction, they are entitled to freedom bail, unless they are awaiting trial. In other words, their extension must be pronounced by a competent court of law. It is here in their constitution. Did they obey it? The answer is no. And you want me to call you human beings? Do you see why I call you animals? I call you animals because even the laws you wrote down themselves, you cannot adhere to them. Section 35, sub, subsection 5 of the same constitution of Musa Ben In subsection 4 of that section, it said, A reasonable time limit in any of an arrest you make where a competent court, you must arrange somebody within 24 hours. Within 24 hours. If you don't take somebody to court within 24 hours, the DPO is in contravention. The state judiciary is in contravention. That is what the law says, but they don't enforce it. Because the lawyer wants his appearance fee. You know, charge a bail lawyer. They will be going 5,000 every time I appear in court. Even the lawyers are also helping to subvert the, the laws of the land. That tells you all you need to know. So, who opposes are the man? You can now see that your stupid anti IPOB legislation in the state is dead on arrival. All of you, in fact, where people uphold the law, you should be impeached. And every idiot in the New State House of Assembly that was part of this nonsense should also leave office as well. Because, of course, you have gone contrary to the oath of office you took. You have directly and consciously subverted the constitution of 1999, which is a crime on its own. Before you engage IPOB, make sure you bring up people who are learned, people that actually went to proper school people who can hold their own because here you don't know you don't know you cannot fathom how intelligent we are you cannot now there was something that i alluded to earlier which is very important that the reason why i'm saying this is because a lot of people don't understand what the effort that goes into the research that we make we research very extensively and everything that we tell you is correct. Everything, you know, some people, I, uh, I know some people that were hired by some of these idiots, they come out on some social media platforms on Facebook and write about it. They have a button now, the can is teach. Everything I teach is correct. To come and counter it. I told you that we are all Igbo people. That's what I said. We are all Igbo people. Even when I heard the name of the governor of Cross River State, to be honest, I thought he was a Yoruba man. Somebody had, had adopted him in Cross River. But here he is. He is the Cross, he is the Cross River State governor. And uh, I wanted to hear what he has to say. And I wanted to focus on one thing. I wanted to focus on his accent and how he speaks. These are the people that Ohanese forgot. These are the people, you know, people say, why do you always blame on Hanese? It's the apex, apex. I say it's the apex in ignorance, super ignorance. No foolish. Just a week is an evil man. But he goes outside and they address him as a Niger Delta. Minke, yes, a week. To be cabinet, he's an evil man. But he goes out, they address him as a Niger Delta. And I want to let our Igwe brothers and sisters understand this. Some of you who are hostile to the idea of there from very few numbers of Igwe's, you are doing it because of abandoned property. Because Fulani gave you your brother's properties in Igwe Orchard and you took it over. And some of you, your parents collected rent, illegally of course, a criminal rent, from houses that were bought by your relatives. And they trained you in it. And you feel ashamed of yourself. And the only way to cover your shame is to say Igbole is not Igbo. I understand all of that. But let us listen to the governor of Cross River State. 
not even in foreign exchange, not so distant. I told you, Jaga, a coin, that you go for. And I keep asking myself, they say it's intelligentsia. They are intelligent. They are indeed intelligentsia. Rubbish, garbage. <laughs> and you were there in all your intelligentsia and all that rubbish. In all of that garbage, you were there. A fallen man came and divided your land, told your own flesh and blood, your own brothers and sisters that they are not evil, that you did nothing, that you called yourself a leader. You open your mouth to say you're a leader. If not for the work that uh, Owasofi and all the rest of them, uh, fed them have been doing, all our people think it will be good. Me, I didn't even know. I never knew that Billy, Billy, could have been black. You see, I never knew that. When we did our research, we came out and we said that there are Igbo people in Cross River State. Oh, Hanese, why are you not uniting this Igbo family? There are Igbo people in Benue. Why are you not bringing them closer? There are Igbo people even in Ido. Why are you not bringing them closer? They, they, they were intelligentsia. They were elite. It's in five Igbo states. Southeast. Why did you not say no? Why didn't you resist? Because it is the full and telling you what to do. Now, listen to, let us see if we can listen to the governor of, uh, of, um, of, of uh, Cross River State. Let us see if we can listen to If this system can allow us, if this system can allow us, let us see if we can play it. For the world to hear, for the world to hear the, what the governor of Cross River State has to say. When I preach this very gospel, and I say that we are all evil people, I know what I'm talking about. I cannot get it to open for some bizarre reason. For some strange reason, I don't know. Maybe they have connived. They have connived to, to deny us this very... <laughs> I don't know why it is not playing, but I will try and play it. I will try to play it. I will try to play this very video. It is very, very important that I play it. That for the world to understand that everything we preach here is true. Somebody asked me, is, 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 we are we Niger Deltans. We are, I said you are all evil people. You are all evil. All the said everybody. If you keep it, you are everybody, you are evil. Go and check it. Do your history, do your research, deny it as much as you can. We are all Igbo people, IGPO, people of the ancient. They said, there's a, bring him, let us kill him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. How can he say such a thing? And now, I can't find it. And I want somebody to please try and resend it to me. The one I have here is not opening for some inexplicable reason. I do not know why it's not opening. And I want it to open because I want to play it. I want to play it for the whole world to hear. For mankind to understand that we are one people. They've been dividing us and cutting us out into pieces. They come to Ebema, they cut Ebema into three. You ask the so-called elite, the so-called apex, apex of the apex. Apex, how come to Ebema in the Delta? There is Ebema in uh, Rivers, Ebema in Nemo. Are they not the same thing? Apex and the elite will not say Ebema. It's the organ food. It's the evil presidents. And they call themselves leaders. They call themselves leaders. They just be old with gray hair. And you call yourselves leaders. Very, very sad indeed. We must see. I must try and play this. I must. I must play it. Listen. And you will I'm an evil. And you will But this is the cross river state governor. And I cannot thank him enough. Because what this man has done is to provide justification for everything we preach on this platform. That everything I say is true. Why would I come to lie to our people? I would never do that. Heaven will, will strike me dead. I can't do that. I'm playing the voice of the governor of Cross River State. As I told you, we are everywhere. The land of the ancients. We are we were divided. We became the way we were because our enemy Britain knew. Britain knew that the only way to weaken these children of God is 
by Judah and Benjamin. And Satan did it with Israel, Judea in the south, and the northern kingdom had the property. Even at the time, the northern kingdom had a king, Judea had a king, and they were fighting themselves. And the Assyrians came and swallowed them. After that, the Babylonians came and destroyed them completely because they were divided. That was what Britain did. Britain divided us. And the ginger with the full and they came back to grab it home. I want this video posted everywhere as a justification that everything we preach on Radio Kiafra is true. When I say it, you may not believe it. It may sound strange. It will sound so strange that you can you say, where's the Virgin and the Camel? Where's it coming from? Is he mad? What is after a while, just a little while, just a little bit of a while, after a while, it becomes very clear. You see, a job is evil. A job, I-J-A-W-Zam, is evil. Is evil. Isoko is evil. Ishekri is evil. I-G-P-O. If you don't know, let me tell you. Differences in language doesn't mean you're different people. And there's an experiment we have this COVID-19 that we the Lord takes for us. I collected samples from every Biafran clan, every ethnic group in Biafran land. I gave it to a laboratory in the United States of America to do the gene mapping and to tell me if they are all one people or not. You know I did that? It's only COVID-19 that's messing everything up. <laughs> you don't know how far we have gone. Wait. Let's just drive and resume normally. <laughs> That's where you see today, you not see today. We have something in store for them that they don't know about. Everybody that we that we claim is Piafra, is Piafra by blood, by gene, by the bone. If you went to one of those zoo universities where you go on strike for four years and graduate after six months of recycling rubbish, don't come to us. We will dismiss because your level of thinking is not up to ours, so you can't comprehend what we say. I told you that we are all one people and you are talking nonsense. He wants to take our land. He's uh, coming to the land the ground. He invited that rubbish. Nothing like Niger Delta. It's like a bull rock and down. What is the meaning of Niger Delta? Let us listen to the governor of Kosovo State. Listen attentively. Listen. Baby Sabo, listen. Elite, listen very carefully. That is why the whole world listens to us. White people listen to this gospel more than the blacks all over the world. If you don't know, because we preach the truth. Don't compromise me. Listen, please. anything they hear on this platform is a fool forever. We don't lie. The facts speaks for itself. In fact, I remember what uh, there's a very Palestinian who used to say it. Is it Rapsipa the Big? I don't know what he used to say. Uh, when he said the facts speaks for itself. Now you understand it, don't you? Niger <laughs> Delta. Delta Niger. Without brain. If you think I'll come here to preach what I don't know, is that what you think? Is that what you think? I preach the gospel of heaven. Heaven gives me a message and give to the living. Think I'll come here and I'll say what I don't know. I thank the governor for finding it for finding it in himself 
to come up to speak to that the world will know. And the devil will be covered with shame. I love what this river group have said. I must say, because now people have now discovered who they are. We have preached on this platform so many times. Don't allow Yoruba Muslims to deceive you. And now this group has come up. What is their name again? The Yoruba Muslims have been the weakest link within the Greek nation because of the habitual preaching. This is actually um, a statement from a Yoruba group. And I'll read it very carefully, please. And I'll try and try and round it up as quickly as possible. A new Yoruba Muslim group, Yomtek, YOMP, is bound to work with OPC, Yoruba World Congress, uh, Akoya, and others to fight for self determination. This is what I love about them. Yoruba Muslim group. Let me tell you what I've said. The Yoruba ethnic nationality is gradually but steadily pulling its components together in preparation for the final push for self determination. The Yoruba Muslims have been the weakest link within the ethnic nation because of the habitual affiliation of this segment of the populace with their fellow Muslims controlling the Sokoto Caliphate in the far north. Spillover in the realm of politics has produced MK Abiola, Bola Ahmed, the Tinubu, both are Muslim Yoruba who have provided veritable conduits for the Fulani hegemonic influence to be felt so acutely in Yoruba land in recent decades and era. Throughout the era of military rule, the Northwest alliance seems to have become naturally. Because, as I told you before, everything I tell you is the truth. I was telling you before that the weak link in Yoruba land are the Muslims. I've told you that before. And now, it is coming from the mouth of Yoruba people as well. So, why would any sensible person doubt what you preach on this planet? I was saying it before. I said, don't preach. I said, I will say it, of course. It's the truth. Once it's the truth, I'll preach it. I told you that what I made it to you is one of those people. The, the reason why they brought out MK or Abiola was because he was a Muslim. People would then say, how about Obasanjo? Obasanjo came about because Obasanjo is a, was a loyal servant of the Caliphate. Obasanjo voted for Shakari. That was his enmity between, uh, that's the, 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 the basis of the enmity between himself and Awolowo. Awolowo got the returning, the, the coding, is it the returning officer, whatever they call him, the, the, the polling station of where in order when Obasanjo voted in 1979. And they wanted to know who Obasanjo voted. Obasanjo voted for Shagari. Go and ask Obasanjo and he will tell you. So we have always known that the weakest link in Yoruba land are the Muslims. Now, rather than coming out to castigating them, they kind of were saying it all the time. Why is he saying this? They have now gone and had a rethink. They have weighed what we told them and they've seen it's the truth. And now they have come out to that, in a nutshell, the young Yoruba Muslim values the kinship with his fellow Yoruba man and other adherents of Islam from northern Nigeria, and they are determined to show their new mindset by joining the self-determination quest for an independent Ujuduwa nation. This is a big deal because this shift in alignment is designed to drastically alter the geopolitical balance in the year they are going for against the Sukhoto Caliphate, as if to expunge all the unsavory memories of the past, the Muslim Jews have resolved to replace the name Jumatu Islam to Yoruba Muslim People's Congress. And I commend them immensely. I commend them immensely for this. Very, very powerful. Very, very immense. And they must continue on this very path. Because Fulani is the problem. A Hausa man has no excuse. I, I, I'm very, very, it's very, very sad that the middle belt allowed themselves to be deceived. But of course, they've apologized and they've accepted the apology. So it's fine, we're moving forward. We love everybody the same. But we want everybody to be free. All we need to do is to stand up at the same time and we are all free. Because what I find astonishing is this what the Fulebus and the saboteurs and the traitors don't ask themselves is this. Bandits have killed two policemen in Sokoto. Five farmers in Kasina. Nobody is raiding the villages, arresting people. Do you know what they're doing in Owasa this, this evening? They're taking people's television. I mean, they said they are looking for their two soldiers. And uh, a soldier is, is in, was injured and he, uh, you know, receiving treatment in the hospital. A soldier came and they're attacking people's television 
taking away their stereo, taking away their mobile phones. Some of them are even carrying their phone into their city to army barracks. Some of these things, you think you are living in the in the era of I don't know maybe Conan the Barbarian. I don't I don't understand. Or when she's uh, one million PC. This is happening in the 21st century. The army will go into a village and be stealing people's properties in front of light that the soldier was injured. That bandits have killed two policemen in Sokoto. I want to hear that that very place that this thing happened, that they have gone there, they visited the village, they killed everybody, and those supporting this type of terrorist policing in our land will be held accountable for it. All the judges who are making money, who are in, in cahoots with the, with the police commissioner and the army commandants of the various divisions they have in our land, Bring me IPOB people, let's make money off them. One day, you will use your mouth to vomit all that money. And I have some names for our people here this evening. Names of those making life difficult for our people. Names of those who have gone about working with the Sioux army, terrorist army, to terrorize our people. Now, in Owaza, in Oko here, in Imo, in a place called Imo Gate, in Owa, army have been arresting people. Especially in Ozoako and Dimo Gate, they have been stealing people's properties and cutting them away to Asa High School. We, I think Asa was a high school and they closed it down and they turned it into army barracks in our own land. A secondary school closed down and turned it into army barracks. And I have some names of the people working with Fulani terrorists in uniform. They have asked the villagers, the youth in the village, to go into the bush to go and look for whoever killed uh, uh, soldiers in Okohe. We don't know who killed their soldiers. But they have said, go and look for them, that they are blaming IPOB for it. Chief Boniface Mokojin. I'm giving you the names of the traitors we have in our land. Boniface, Mokoji, Chief Martins, Wosu, Chief Okosisi, they call him Okosisi One of Okoya village. And for Uzu, Uzuaku village, we have Chief Richard Obama, Chief Obogwa Elijah, who is the original prime minister, and somebody they call his royal highness is a Godwin Okanma. In a group south autonomous community in the far west at the state. These are the traitors we have working with full and Jamut in our land. And funny enough, in this Oka was the same place that this army during Operation Python has killed our people and dumped their bodies inside the Goro pit. These same useless people there never came out to say that. And I'll give you the names again, Chief. But if there's anywhere you see this man, please, anywhere you see him, any of them, give them IPOB treatment. If they come into our bar, they know what to face them. Anywhere you watch, anywhere you see any of these people, Chief Boniface Wokoji, Chief Martin Sumosu, Chief one they call Okosisi one of Okoya village, and from Ozuaku village, there's one boy, somebody called Chief Richard Wawa. Chief of Gogo Elijah, the traditional prime minister, and his royal highness, this so-called royal highness or royal, his, his royal disgrace. Anywhere you say this man, you teach me a lesson. These are the traits in our land, working with terrorist army and police to give full and land in Oba. These are the criminals doing it. And I am warning them, this night, with the hearing of the whole world, should anything happen to Prince Akawan, who is the coordinator, IPOB coordinator of One Man Country Zone? It's called One Man Country is a zone we have in Oba. Who, right now, as I'm speaking to you, is the military are holding him. They have tortured him. I'm not sure he will survive tomorrow morning. His name is Prince Akawan. He was beaten to an inch of his life and his media officer as well. They are currently at a, as a high school with a full and military camp with all his property stolen. So this is for the world to know. If anything, should anything happen to Prince, I can want the coordinator of IPOB, 
in a place called one man comfort zone in Oba. All of these people will pay very dearly for it. This idiot called Chief Boniface Woko, Chief Martin Suwos, Woko Sisi Wanoboko, your village, Chief Richard Wamba, Chief Obokuo, Elijah, His Royal Highness is a God be local. All of you will pay very dearly for it. Not only this same nonsense is happening in the police state. There is a traditional ruler in Afibo South. There is a traditional ruler in Afibo South making life difficult for our people. He has also taken money from Miyetiyala to establish a full Fulani village in Afibo South. His name is Apostle Okorye Ekumankama. And I am shocked because I have a lot of respect and regard for the Ekumankama family. They were in government college home here with me. Of course, one of the finest one of the finest high schools in the whole world, of course. Nobody can dispute that. The name of the village is Amangueda. I hope it's not the same Ekumankama that I used to know. Not the same family that I used to know. Because it is an, a very, very honorable family. Very, very important. These people are those who are giving our people grief. And I must warn. If you have somebody, if you are a Biafran in DSS or in the army, and they ask you to come with them to go and raid any IPOB family meeting, and you join them, anything that happens to you is your business. And that village, we will see that village as a village that produces sabotage. You don't have people going about arresting innocent people in the north. It doesn't happen in Fulani land. But you are busy arresting your own people, people trying to save you from the mess that you're in, people trying to save you from the mess that the zoo has put you in. And what is that mess about? It is the mess that Archbishop Onaiko, Emeritus, of course, is talking about. That the zoo is bad, that things are happening in the zoo that will make it break up before 2023. Those are the things that we are trying to solve. I know maybe because of my outspokenness and the fact that I lead IPOB all over the world, some people have connived not to give light to the entire Ibeku clan where I come from, in Niger State. And uh, I asked them, who are those responsible? They said they will get me their names in the next few days. The whole of Ibeku that is blackout, that is where the government house is. In the land of my ancestors. There is no light. For months now, no light. And those who are responsible for this are those that claim that they know of our being. I'm giving them only five days. No, no, five days. Um, I'll be on air again on Wednesday. I give them between now and Wednesday, three days maximum, to make sure that they restore light in Ibeku or else. They will have us to contend with. And you may be wondering why that is very important. It's very, very important because we can't allow full and little broom sabotage in our land. It cannot happen. There were some people who were busy selling our ancestral land in my village. And we put a stop to it. They've been running around with their full and masters trying to, and BBC, you know, trying to ferment trouble. They were selling our ancestral land. And we said no to it. And I gave the order, if you have bought land opposite Golden Guinea, you are wasting your time. Those structures will be demolished. You are wasting, I don't care if it's a hospital, a church, or whatever, they are ancestral lands. It's for, it's for the community. It doesn't belong to anybody. I don't know what is putting into our people these days. Everybody is busy selling land. Go and look for something to do. They are selling village land. Is, is that is that an occupation or what? You can try that elsewhere. Not, 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 not in Afaru. We cannot do it. Every land taken or given to individuals will be returned back to the people, including old timber shed, which will be returned back to the people. The era of that garbage has come and gone. You can take your light all you like. I'm giving you from now to Wednesday to return the light in big. It must come back. If it doesn't, then there is nothing that the electricity company is doing. They might as well back up and leave. And with that, we have come to the end of our program this very day. I thank you all very much for listening as always. And without any hesitation, everything we preach here is the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. Once again, I congratulate Obaseki, 
once again, I thank the governor of Cross River State, and I also commend those of you that stood up very bravely in Ibadan, Ibadan, Governor Week and all the rest of them, to ensure that the will of the people prevailed. I expect the same thing to happen in Imo State, all we need to be there today. I expect Imo people to also rise up and to make sure that that Janja weed slave, hope for them is no longer there. I thank you all for listening this very evening. And as always, do not forget what Biafra means to us in our religion. And here on Radio Biafra is where we worship. Because Chuko Vikade Makumihene Elohim Adonai Al Shaddai is our God. Until Wednesday, from me, from here. Good evening.